Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting shit to change. Why, thank you for asking. Actually, I've been playing a lot of Far Cry 5 this week. I don't know why you were so curious, but it has been getting me to thinking, the old Far Cry 5. You see, I've been playing it a lot, a lot, a lot, and I thought to myself, you know what? If this game was the first Far Cry game to have released in, like, five years, we might be hailing it as one of the greatest games we've ever played. In fact, if Far Cry 5 wasn't released off the back of Ubisoft open world game after Ubisoft open world game doing the exact same shit, we might be hailing it as a critical second coming. But now, well now it's just another Ubisoft game. Now we're going to talk about Ubification today, which uh, predominantly applies to big budget AAA Ubisoft open world games. Yes, there are exceptions. Yes, even within the open world games, there are some exceptions that prove the rule. You can write them all down if you want, be pedantic, point out the bits that don't 100% line up with what I've said, but I won't read it because I'm more important than that. Doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. Oh, Ubisoft! Far Cry 5 could potentially be one of the best games Ubisoft has ever made. Like much of Ubisoft's recent output, Far Cry 5 is densely packed with stuff to do across a vast map. On top of that, it's got interesting story-based missions, well-written characters, and rock-solid action gameplay. Its gameplay loop is a fiercely addictive one, its combat satisfying, and its rewards abundant. It could indeed potentially be one of the best games Ubisoft's ever made, but unfortunately I don't know if it is. I don't know because despite having played Far Cry 5 for days and days before saying these very words, it only takes a few moments away from the game to cause much of my experience to melt away and bleed into the sea. The roiling, overwhelming sea of software I can only call... Ubisoft games. Regardless of genre, Ubisoft has moulded its games around a comfortable pattern that has taken unmistakable shape this generation, with Ubisoft pumping out fewer original games year on year and sticking ever more rigidly to a tested blueprint regardless of IP. There are some exceptions, but in general, an Ubisoft game contains the following things. A huge open world, a slowly unfolding map, multiple hidden collectibles, a handful of side missions recycled across the play space, gameplay that blends stealth and action with options for either playstyle, moving targets that patrol roads and require hijacking or destroying, very light crafting, tons of XP opportunities for straightforward skill trees, the liberation or clearance of distinct regions, etc, etc, etc. While many individual game series, of course, will share traits from their predecessors, Ubisoft is one of the few companies that will have multiple intellectual properties sharing everything as if it was all part of the same series. It's basically like Telltale Games with more genres and an obscene marketing budget. Certainly all these similarities manifest in some form or another across Ubisoft's three major franchises, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry and Watch Dogs. And while each game is unique in its own right, everyone shares a near identical foundation and a number of distinctly cloned ancillary features. In fact, it's not because the games are identical that they stand out to me as Ubisoft games, it's because they're so different while still boasting the same inherent structural similarities. For franchises to be so different and yet so remarkably alike, that's what I find striking. You see, Assassin's Creed is a stealth-heavy historical adventure emphasising silent kills. Watch Dogs is a more traditional open-world game with a focus on hacking and corporate espionage. Far Cry, meanwhile, is a first-person shooter that plunges the player into unequivocal hostile territory from the get-go. Every game is different, but that gameplay loop, that similar, repetitive, busy work, the way story missions play out with their overemphasized bombast, the fact so many Ubisoft protagonists are angry 
about a deceased relative. The prevalence of radio towers. Well, at least until recently, Ubisoft sort of worked out that it's been mocked too much to have any credibility left fucking climbing radio towers to unlock the map. Fucking stupid. So much is shared across every major Ubisoft game that although they occupy different genres, they provide fundamentally the same experience. They trigger the same positive responses. They gratify their players the exact same way. They drown their audience in the same avalanche of nebulous content. Hell, they're all visually the same too, aping the artistic style of each other with dutiful accuracy. And it's hardly surprising when you consider that Ubisoft is the lord of design by committee, so all the studios are pitching in on each other's shit. A well-oiled machine of groupthink game design has been crafted here. The amount of development bleed over has led to a software bleed over. I can't pick these games out from a crowd anymore. More recently, the Ghost Recon series fell into the same pool as the other Ubisoft games, with Wildlands also becoming an open world action game with stealth elements and the same story missions, moving missions, outpost clearances, collectibles, etc, etc. The Division, of course, is also unmistakably Ubisoft in its setup and execution. If you're wondering just how far the Ubification structure can go, consider The Crew, a racing game with an impressive amount of Ubification. And I'm not just talking about its open world and car-friendly take on radio towers. It followed the pattern right down to the protagonist being an angry man avenging a dead relative. Jesus Christ. And here's the thing, I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, this cycle of uberfied games, at least not at the time of talking. Certainly Ubisoft is not seeing an issue with it since it keeps making them and selling them by the bucket load. While some fans may lament what Ubisoft did to the Ghost Recon series, the uberfied Wildlands is a bestseller, one of 2017's hottest commodities, as it too went open world and followed the all familiar Ubisoft cliches to become another live service friendly game. I'll talk and enemies to tag them so you can see them through walls and shit. That's in a load of them now. You can come up with loads when you really think long enough. The thing is, you can pick up any Ubisoft game out of a hat and expect to have a relatively good time with it. Having perfected its craft after years of honing each of Ubisoft games are at the very least satisfying to play on a most basic level, featuring rollicking, expertly directed story missions, a density of mindless content to chew through on a long empty day, and a sense of character progression that rewards a player and keeps them hooked. It's just you can do exactly what I just said you could do. You can pick any Ubisoft game out of a hat. Just reach into the hat and pick one fucker out at pure random and you're all but guaranteed pretty much the same bloody experience. Far Cry 5 could be the best game Ubisoft's ever made, but at this point it's a victim of increments. Am I playing it a lot? Yes. Am I always feeling rewarded by it? Yeah. Are its action sequences and gameplay cycles compelling? Sure. Does any of that make it different from the last Ubisoft game I played, or the one before that? Nah. Not really, no. I guess I could say it's more polished, or it's got a really nice environment with its Montana backdrop. I could say I really like the dog in it, but I can't say it's remarkable. I can't say it's impressive, that it's really all that interesting. It's certainly not special. No Ubisoft game is special anymore. Because I've played too many Ubisoft games by now, I just have, and the formula perfected such improves by degrees, not miles, not by any remarkable margin at all. And in a year's time, I can likely do this exact same episode but mention a completely different game while being able to more or less make the exact same points, Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Oi! But again, that's fine and Ubisoft can content itself with its formula for now, if it doesn't mind the fact that it's basically the Tecmo Koei of the Western world, that it's turned not one, not two, but three major franchises and counting into its own personalised Dynasty Warriors. A series of games released in droves, hard to tell apart and not capable of becoming memorable or special anymore through sheer ubiquity, availability and repetition. And you know me, I like Dynasty Warriors so I'm not one to judge. Or rather, I liked Dynasty Warriors until Nine came along and they did what they did to Zhang He. Just like Activision Blizzard and Electronic Arts, Ubisoft is ready to impose its formula upon any game regardless of origins, all in the name of creating immediately gratifying but structurally vapid gameplay loops. All the better to facilitate their money-making live services programs. And when it comes to formula, ain't no one better in the mainstream big-budget biz than Ubisoft. 
Oh, and let us not forget that the highly anticipated Beyond Good and Evil 2 is all but confirmed to eschew the excellently tight formula of its predecessor to become a sprawling open world Ubisoft game, complete with many of the familiar trappings we've already discussed. And it may indeed be a fine game, a very fine game indeed. But will it be as memorable as its classic original if it goes through a full Uberfication process? I can't say I hold out much hope if it becomes as trite as the rest of the publishers lineup. Ubisoft worlds are fun, but they're hardly immersive, believable worlds, no matter how large they are. They're in fact some of the least believable worlds out there due to just how true to formula every world behaves. Every game environment has its neat little outposts lined with the same bunch of enemies who patrol the same little areas. Almost every game has you chip away at the enemy's power by taking out the same old assets over and over. The problem is it's also neat and tidy, codified, lacking in shock value. There's nothing dynamic, nothing surprising. If you buy an Ubisoft game these days, no matter what's on the box, there's a very good chance you know exactly what you're getting. And what you're getting is what you got from another game with a different name with a different doodle on the box. Again, it can be fun as fuck, and players are given plenty of toys to play with, but there's nothing, nothing in a major AAA big budget Ubisoft game that makes me want to play through it more than once, or even, in most cases, the whole way through, even the first time. At this point in time, Ubisoft is making processed cheese in game form. It's sound, it satiates, it boasts a winning formula, but it's also kind of empty and bland no matter how much you might enjoy playing with it. And I worry about Beyond Good and Evil 2 more after having played Far Cry 5 and realising that while I've been playing it through sheer compulsion, I will absolutely instantly drop it, just like that. Boom! Bye Felicia, don't give a shit. I'll drop it straight away the moment something else comes along that interests me more, which is almost anything. That's how I've taken to playing Ubisoft games now. They're not necessarily video games in their own right to me. They're the games I play between games. Fluffy filler to keep me ticking along until I find something more mentally stimulating or interactively engrossing to play. And it's a shame because Ubisoft is more than capable of producing truly outstanding work that could go down in history. When the pressures of the AAA market aren't on it, Ubisoft can give us something like Rayman Legends, or something equally brilliant like Grow Home. Even in its cookie-cutter open-world games, there are slices of brilliance. I think back to some of the genuinely excellent story missions found across its games, and I lament that Ubisoft couldn't focus the amazing direction and pacing found in some of those solo missions towards a full game. Something with a more linear structure to allow Ubisoft's genuinely talented writers and directors and programmers a chance to create a stunning memorable piece of art, not just a sandbox, not just a live service, not just another forgettable stress ball of an Ubisoft game, but honest to God's asshole art. But eh, there's no money in that, so I won't go holding my breath for anything other than what the Ubification process produces. Digital junk food. Which again is... fine. It's just... fine. <laughs> the problem I'm talking about this week isn't a problem unless anyone at Ubisoft has any ambition, then it's a bit of an issue. You see, uh, in order to really highlight just how ubiquitous Ubisofting has become, uh, all I have to do is type out a vague mission structure to find the same mission type for all of the games. Doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, those trucks that go around in Ghost Recon Wildlands, or the trucks, the Reaper trucks that go around in Far Cry 5, or the chariots with materials on them in Assassin's Creed Origins. Roving targets that you chase around or, you know, you find them on the roads on your travels, and they, they're all called different things in each of the games. But all I had to do was type out uh, the name of the, the game series I want, Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, uh, Watch Dogs, whatever, and follow it with the word Convoy. Just whatever game, Convoy, and I'd eventually just very easily actually find the proper name of the mission. And it was the same mission, but they were all just Convoy missions. It's the same with uh, bandit outposts. It's not all bandits in all the games, but there are always camps or outposts or fortresses. And you just have to type the game name and then a vague word, and you'll find every single franchise, every single mission, 
all of it the same. And I realise that a lot of these missions are the same in many open worlds, not just Ubisoft games. But even those open world games, uh, they're nowhere near as codified, as, as typified, as typical, as bland, as generic, as factory standard as Ubisoft's work. Doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. And they didn't all start that way either. If you trace each of these big open world franchises back to their original games, you actually find that they're, you know, a little bit different. They're actually branched out fairly. You'd actually imagine it to be the other way around. Like they'd all start rather generic and bog standard, and then they'd branch out and do their own different weird things. But instead, they all started out doing their own different unique things and just, it's almost like they, they started off at like the base of a cone and they're all just designing their way up to the point. And they're now just at the point of the cone. And that's where all the games are now as they follow that live service model, which is of course just an evolution of the MMO. And again, it's fine. There's a reason why these designed by committee games are designed the way they are, because they tap into baser urges, they tap into our most basic, primal desires and gratifications, and they remain successful, for now. But then again, I used to love Telltale's formula, and I used to think, well, we can apply that to anything, it can do no wrong. And now, I don't even care about the next seasons of The Walking Dead that they do. I, I loved the first season of The Walking Dead. I really enjoyed season two. I really like Tales from the Borderlands as well, but there's a reason why I mentioned Telltale a little bit in today's video, and that's because I don't give a shit about Telltale shit anymore. And I think that's where we'll end up with Ubisoft games and live services on a whole. This ties into what I've said before. They don't seem sustainable to me, you see because once you've picked a live service to dedicate your fucking life to, I mean, what are you gonna do? Dedicate a second life to it? No, because you'll be playing Second Life already, and you'll be playing a Ubisoft game in Second Life. That's why you've got a Second Life account, so you can play Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. Anyway, I've gone on long enough, because I've got a lot to say about this, actually. It's a topic that many people will look at and think, oh, well, it's not very important. I don't know why you talk about that, Jim. But I actually care about Ubisoft's work, because I think Ubisoft, uh, its developers are indeed incredibly talented, and I just feel that their talents are going to waste making this dry toast. It's dry software toast. Anyway, thank God for me. I know what you're thinking, and no. I ain't gonna have you climbing towers all over the county for me. Over and over again, doing the exact same fucking thing, over and over again, doing the exact same fucking thing, over and over again.